So, what do you think of my new digs? Not bad, huh? Considering the uh, the way that I performed last night in DFS, that's where I'm going to be living from now on. Just living on the streets, living in garbage. It was bad. It was really bad. Um, everything that could go wrong did go wrong, and that happens. And sometimes you're just on the wrong end of it. And last night was one of those nights. I don't really want to live here too much longer, so uh, let's go see what the damage was. Alrighty. So here's a look at everything. As you can see, I put up 242.8 FanDuel points, which is god awful. I finished 527th of 568 in my double up. Just one particular double up, they're all pretty much the same, uh, which is really bad. And I returned $1.80 on my $68 in entry fees. So, to the person that actually lost uh, head to head to me last night, <laughs> sorry about your rough night, man, because <laughs> you did pretty bad as well. But it's just not good. And honestly, I didn't like it when we closed. Um, I realized that I did not eat enough chalk last night almost immediately at lock and that's my bad that's bad roster construction and you know you can see it on here now Boyan at 34.7 you know Wiggins at 16 is okay but like I there's just it's all single digits I built a I built a GPP lineup for cash last night it's not good um, it's poor planning on my part and Look, sometimes you get caught up on guys that you like and you end up fitting in things that you shouldn't. And I think that's probably what I did last night. So just taking a look at my lineup in particular, which is up here. Um, Kemba Walker ended up doing uh, 3.5x. He had 26 points in 33 minutes. I'm not too upset about the minutes. And ultimately, I was 15 minutes short of my projections, which I'm, I'm fine with, but ultimately, uh, everybody was just bad, save for two dudes. Um, Drew Holiday actually, you know, put up a decent night. I would have liked a little bit more, but I can't really fault him too much. He, he did 4.6 in value. I'd, I would love that on a normal night, comparatively speaking. He ends up being one of the, the better plays that I had. Then we get to Wiggins. Uh, just not good. 15.2 um, points in 35 minutes. Just an absolute egg. Uh, I looked through the box score in the probably like the late third quarter, and he had the same amount of shot attempts as Jamal Crawford. So, you know, you just you, sometimes you just can't see that coming. And I didn't see that coming uh, last night, obviously. Um, oddly enough, even though he was like a really not good pick to 2.5x. Um, I don't mind as much because of his ownership percentage. Since he's at 16, I don't think that I was totally outlandish with it. Um, then we get to Wade. 1.4% uh, owned, which is just... Uh, it's just embarrassing for cash. I shouldn't even have landed there. I honestly thought he would have been so much more highly owned. Um, so somebody knew something that I didn't. And by somebody, I mean 98.6% uh, of the <laughs> people that were in my double up. Uh, he put up 22.3, um, and things were looking really good early. It just so happens that I took Wade, Stanley Johnson, and Andre Drummond from a game that was an absolute awful drubbing. And Wade isn't going to get extra run in a 35-point blowout. And Stanley Johnson and Andre Drummond were on the other end of it. So just a, a rough scenario all around. Um, Boyan, a guy that I didn't even really want to end up with. So I'm not going to sit here and like take super amounts of credit. You know, I ended up with him basically because he was in the best game matchup and I needed to fill small forward. $4,200, he was 34.7% owned, and he put up 39.4 fantasy points, good for 9.4x. It's just awesome. 
uh, absolutely awesome performance, um, which would have been really nice on a lineup that wasn't duty. Stanley Johnson, uh, honestly, the fact that Stanley Johnson ended up with 14.6 points in a game that was like 100 to 66 or something at one point, uh, I'm surprised he got as high as he did. Still only 3.6x, very much the wrong decision. Um, I was on all of the wrong parts of that Cleveland-Detroit game, which is painfully obvious right now. Uh, Blake, this, this is a section, like, Blake underperformed, 4x, you know, 35 points in 33 minutes. I thought he was primed for a bigger game. I think a lot of people thought he was primed for a bigger game, DFS notwithstanding, you know, he's only 9.7% owned, but... Against the Knicks, the Clippers just getting throttled by 22. It, it's embarrassing. Um, I didn't see that coming. Uh, I didn't. I haven't looked yet. We'll get to the centers in a second. But I know that DeAndre was playing really poorly. Um, if I were all, it, like we, we mentioned it right after lock, uh, it is on the the live before lock video that I probably should have dropped down from Drummond to DeAndre to open up more stuff uh, throughout my lineup. Which, if that's the case, I'm pretty sure that DeAndre was just as bad as Andre Drummond last night. So, uh, My only saving grace last night is Carmelo Anthony. I was not on him in my morning video and then ended up doing some research and liking him. Um, he put up 41.8 on a $6,700 salary. That's good for 6.2x. I couldn't be happier there, but I mean, really, I had those same sort of feelings for a couple guys earlier in the lineup, and they were terrible. And then finally, we get to the best one Andre Drummond. Cavs back or front court should just be feasting. 19.1 fantasy points. 116 to 88 absolute embarrassing performance at home and I'm on it I'm on it hard one of the first guys I locked so that's what a whiff looks like um, I play predominantly cash a lot of that stuff means you need to be on the right side of a quote-unquote coin flip and you know this week I'm not uh, when the good nights happen they happen you know pretty exponentially there's a lower limit to the loss. So you just keep on uh, going after it. Only one game tonight, so there's not going to be much recovery. But I will try to play Wednesday night. See where I can get. Just to touch on um, all of the performances here. Um, leading off with Russell Westbrook. Who I liked in the morning. And he was popping... Um, when I ran my optimizer, when I ran Fantasy Cruncher, and I got nervous. Um, the Pelicans are really good at defending the rim, and I thought that that was going to negatively impact Westbrook. I thought that I wouldn't have cared about something like that last year, but now, um, now that he's got Paul George and Mello, to me, I thought, okay, you know, if the Pelicans are limiting more shots at the rim, that's going to open stuff up for everything else. I didn't think that Westbrook was in a situation to just have a have the huge game that he needed. I was wrong. <laughs> 65.2 fantasy points in 38 minutes. Uh, just a, a huge night. Wall and Lillard, uh, not very good. Kyrie, great performance, 59.6. I actually wanted to try to get him in. He was in my notes saying that I liked him. Um, what I probably would have ended up doing, let me look at the salary to see if it makes sense. No, I wouldn't have been able to get to him. Um, I should have focused a little bit more on him, but I just, I didn't really like that game. So I ended up going from uh, Kyrie to Kemba. And I thought Kemba was in a really good spot. And at one point that late in the game, I don't... I should probably look into this to see why he wasn't on the... Does anybody know why he wasn't on the floor? They, you know, they were only up like 10, but... Kemba was off with like 4 minutes and change to go and not foul trouble. He played 
33 minutes, so I, I like I know that he was relatively fine. I didn't get any alerts about any injuries or anything, so I don't know. Um, Jeff Teague put out uh, 39, which is real nice. Um, Bledsoe with the 41.6, sort of a coming out party for him in Milwaukee. That makes me feel good. I feel like that brings him into like a rosterable category again. I, was, I wanted to see a little bit more from him. Um, no real huge eggs at point guard. Like, I mean, obviously you don't want to have Wall and Lillard and Walker, but you know all these guys did a little bit better than say Andre Drummond at center. If you were looking for value, hopefully you had a piece of Shabazz Napier or Frank Mason who put up 24.6 or Calderon even with 23.8. But ultimately, I took two point guards and uh, they didn't play very well. Should have had Russell Westbrook. A shooting guard. I, I said a couple times, you know, like Victor Oladipo's fine. He's fine. And I don't know why. I just, I couldn't get it. I never was getting myself on to anything coming out of that Indiana Orlando game. Well, I picked the wrong shooting guards as well. Surprise, surprise. Victor Oladipo puts up 73.3 in 33 minutes. Just astronomical performance from Oladipo. Now, granted, he had, I believe, seven steals and two blocks. Or, yeah, I think that's right. So, crazy amount of points just from, uh, you know, the more variance-heavy categories. But, he still would have put up 50 and change without it. So, congrats to everybody that was on him. Um... If anybody else was on the shooting guards at the top of the list, uh, it was pretty rough sledding. Um, nobody really went out of their way to have anything resembling an awesome game. They were, everybody was generally below value. Beal, Tyreek, Batum, Middleton, CJ, Hardaway, Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell, 36 minutes. I wonder if this data is perfectly right. Or I was just looking at it wrong last night. I looked at uh, the score app last night while I was laying in bed, and it was pretty late in the Utah game, like a minute or two left, and it was saying Donovan Mitchell had 43 minutes played. Um, Wiggins, obviously, duty. Wade, duty. Avery Bradley, Lou Williams, just yuck. All the value was in that mid-tier. So uh, you wanted Will Barton, you wanted Gary Harris. Two guys that I would have certainly been on had the Wilson Chandler news came out um, before Locke. What are you going to do? The, that got risky. So if you had the balls to play people from the Nuggets, you know, you got paid off. Um, Marcus Smart with a good game. Redick with a good game. Wesley Matthews. Jeremy Lamb, who was questionable for most of the night. And then if you scroll all the way down, you can find out that Jamal Crawford at $3,000 put up 23.4 fantasy points, a.k.a. the dude that took the fantasy points away from Wiggins. Not happy about it. It's a low energy morning so far, guys. I don't have coffee. I'm still drinking water. I, it's just, I feel like I don't even deserve coffee after this experience. Uh, small forward. Um, Giannis. Look good. Ish. I mean, it's hard. Like At 12,000, he's got to put up a bundle. That's 60 points. Put up 47.6. Um, you're not going to be super mad about something like that. You'll probably be a little bit more mad about LeBron James, 27 minutes, 38 fantasy points, and uh, just they blew him out. They did for the first time in a while. LeBron's able to get some rest. Paul George with a big game, 51 fantasy points in 36 minutes. That's huge. Harrison Barnes finished with 42.2. Uh, he was in my notes as someone that I liked um, as some mid-tier small forward filler. Glad I uh, didn't go with that. That's smart. Um, I also thought that Joe Ingles looked decent as filler, so he put up 10.7. It's all about making the right calls, folks. You can see the right guys. You just got to force them in. I thought Kyle Anderson looked okay. Uh, I didn't expect 36 points in 30 minutes, but I wish that I would have. The only saving grace, Boyan Bogdanovic. 39.4 fantasy points in 34 minutes, and that is um, 
the only good thing that happened to me last night in fantasy. Uh, anybody that was on Wilson Chandler, uh, feel bad for that late scratch. Although, I mean, you should have known better. Um, but not really a ton of value out of small forward, which isn't terribly shocking. Um, that's really a place where you needed to to be right. In hindsight, I wish that I would have gone with Giannis. I, someone asked me uh, who my favorite value plays were in the DFS Reddit. And um, I said that I liked Giannis, I liked Blake, and I liked Ben Simmons. Uh, ben Simmons with 50 fantasy points at 10-3. You know, Giannis put up 47.6. Uh, Blake was a little lower, you know, 35, but, you know, lower salary point. I rostered one of them, and I only rostered Blake, and I only, and he was the worst of the three. So, I need to make a conscious decision, and this is, I've mentioned this to people that have asked questions, uh, whether at the the Reddit or, you know, in the comments or on Twitter, like, the things that I can do. Exercises like this, going back through and seeing the performance of everyone else compared to where you picked and where you went wrong. Um, it, it's invaluable to sort of go back over your mistakes. And last night is an instance where I have plenty of them. Um, I put together, like I said at the beginning, I put together a GPP lineup um, for a cash game. And that's just, it's sloppy play. To be honest, I got a little too uh, wrapped up in that live video. But ultimately, I was going to end up on a lot of the wrong side of this, and I was going to end up way less chalky than I wanted to. So Anthony Davis ended up finishing with 57.5 fantasy points in 44 minutes. Um, I wasn't really keen on him last night. I thought it was a weird matchup, but he came through. Uh, I've mentioned that I liked Ben Simmons. Um, I had interest in Porzingis and as well. Um, he had a really solid game. Blake was, you know, he underperformed a little bit, but I'm not super upset about it. I just, I saw some upside there. I was never really looking at uh, LaMarcus Aldridge or Aaron Gordon, Favors or Tobias Harris. I saw Tobias Harris getting a lot of love last night, and I didn't really understand it. Um, but, I mean, that game's a throwaway. You can't, it's... Like, I obviously made the wrong decision on Drummond. He laid a gigantic egg, but that whole team laid an egg. They were good. They got clobbered. So it's, it's hard to see a 40-point blowout uh, coming. You get a really nice value chunk of Mello, Otto Porter, Thad Young, Jason Tatum. Um, I was never on any parts of that other than Mello. In fact, I thought Jason Tatum had a really uh, not awesome matchup. I didn't think that um, he was in a good spot. Turns out, I'm, uh, like most of the other decisions that I made last night were incredibly wrong. Um, if you were looking for value down the line, it was probably Frank Kaminsky, 3,800, 31 fantasy points. Um, but other than that, like no major, major like goose eggs at the top. And then we get to center. Um, so-so performances out of Cousins and Bede and Towns, you know, nothing dramatically terrible, but, um, not the upside most people were looking for. Even Jokic, you know, 41.3, so, like, that's a good game. Nobody was like, oh, Jokic screwed me last night. But, with Millsap out, with Chandler out, I bet people were thinking they were going to get a lot more out of him. Um, I didn't see the love last night. I thought it would be a better idea to spend 200 less dollars and take Andre Drummond and his 19 points, so what the hell do I know? But you live and you learn. Um, in hindsight, like full-on hindsight, I end up on Gortat, which opens up, um, you know, guys like Giannis at small forward. And I'm not just saying that because Gortat put up 31.5. He was I mentioned you know he was a good value yesterday in uh, in my morning video. Um, but ultimately at center you didn't want to be on Drummond. You didn't want to be on DeAndre Jordan and his 
Um, you pretty much just wanted to be on Marcus All, which I ignored my own advice of taking Marcus All when my Conley's out. Um, or you wanted to be on Vooch, 45.6. Or you felt like Dwight Howard is going to boss on the Timberwolves and put up 56 fantasy points in 30 minutes. I didn't see it coming. I didn't even sniff around Dwight Howard last night. Um, but he just he went ham. Like real big ham. Like Thanksgiving ham. Jokes are low energy today, guys. Uh, this, was a, this was a brutal beating. I took a lot of body blows. So that's basically it. That's a look through at um, who performed well, who didn't, and the people that didn't are mostly uh, guys that are up here in my roster. Um, but like I said, this is something that happens regularly. Not all the Knights are going to be winners, and sometimes they are going to be brutal, brutal losers. As long as you're practicing good bankroll management, don't let it tilt you. Just go through it for a day. You know, take your lumps and go back and try to correct the mistakes that you made from the night before. I can't do that tonight because there's only one game, which is ridiculous. And there's some sort of crazy amount of games Wednesday night, like 14 or 15. Like, does everybody play? It might be everybody or everybody but whoever plays tonight. I haven't looked at it because um, I know I'll be traveling, but. Uh, no, obviously no projections for me today for the one game. I'll have everything up for the Wednesday games um, either later today or early tomorrow. Uh, no videos for me coming up until potentially Friday night, depending on when I get home, but most likely Saturday morning will be the, the time to get back on it. Um, but other than that, uh, sorry to anybody who took the advice that agreed with me. Congratulations to everybody who took the advice that didn't end up in my lineup because I assume that that had to be decent advice. Um, please keep me out of the dirty, dirty alley that I showed you earlier. Uh, the way to do that would be to like this video, uh, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Twitter, uh, check out the threads on the Reddit DFS. All of that stuff um, is super beneficial for me right now. Um, I hope that I can bring you a more positive and entertaining outlook on potentially Saturday slate uh, moving forward. I hope everybody has an exceptional uh, holiday and a very safe Thanksgiving, and I will talk to you guys again very soon. Thank you.